Hi everyone, uh, my name is Stefan Bönnemann and you can find me on Twitter. So that's my last name and it's seriously 4N. Um, you might know me from a few projects I'm working on. So there's the first one, which is CONCAT. It's a conference we put on in March this year. It's been pretty great. I'm working on the open source project Hoodie. And I'm also part of the team for Reject.js, which is part of the Web Tech Fest later this month in Berlin, uh, Berlin along with uh, JSConf EU and CSSConf EU. So hopefully you get to be there. But today's talk is not so much about these projects. It's about dependencies and how we handle them. And I've thought about that a lot in the past year. But actually, let me start out with a story today. About two years ago, when I started my university course, I was looking out for people who had already done some interesting stuff. And I met this one person, and they had already done a project with Node. So obviously, we became friends. And Node was just their most recent project. They had worked with C, uh, C++ hardware, extensive knowledge of networks. And he knew way more than I do, even today. And so we compared stuff, and it always seemed like, nonetheless, that I was a bit more productive than him. And so we were comparing code, and I was reading his code, and there was this one line where he was requiring a module that helped him handle asynchronous code. And I was asking, like, why are you using this module over async? What is better about it? And he's like, what's async? Um, I don't know, wrapped callbacks, they annoyed me, and so I wrote this module myself, and then I handled asynchronous code. And I'm like, OK, you don't know async? That's the most dependent upon, most downloaded uh, module at the time, and it does exactly that. And so here's the one thing that I could teach him. It's use NPM search. And actually, you should use nodemodules.com by Matthias, who should be somewhere here, um, NPM search or NPM's own website. And once he did that, and once he realized that in Node, he doesn't have to go in and write everything himself. He can just go, and someone has probably already done it, and probably also in a better way, his productivity just exploded. And it got to the point where I had to be really careful what I was saying, because the next morning he had just built it. And so it got to the point where we were living in the student home at the time. We had this really annoying internet where you had to re-authenticate every few hours with the form. And so I said it would be nice to have some bot that just automatically fills the, fills the form. And then the next morning he had written a script that automates the router UI, so it changes the MAC address, which forces the form to come up, and then wrote another bot that filled it in. We had the best internet in the thing, and that's just because he was using NPM and all the modules all the time. And I think that's pretty great. But there's another story, and I think it's even more important for me and for us as a welcoming community. As I said, it was the beginning of the university course, and obviously I was also meeting beginner programmers. And there was this one person that had already done some websites with WordPress, custom themes, copy-pasting, trial and error, all that stuff. But he had already sold some stuff, too. So he wanted to make real web application in advance. And then the university courses started, and they were teaching him real programming. And he was really frustrated because he couldn't apply anything to his dream of like building real web applications. And here's the one thing that I told him. Of course, it wasn't just as easy as use NPM search because he didn't know NPM. But I told him, look, for everything you want to do, there's already someone who has done it, and you can just use it. And all you have to do is you have to rearrange it in new ways and become creative. And so it made them a productive developer. Some people, especially universities, think that you can only teach things by teaching the fundamentals and the core principles. But I think that you can stop bore, boring people and just give them tools they can handle, and so they get hooked and they can create. And once they create, they cre create more, and over time they just want to explore on their own and they want to learn. So that's what he said to me. Like, if everything he had, had learned about technology would have been the stuff in university, he would just quit because he couldn't build new stuff. And with this, in three months, he had built a new application using Express, using um, um, the Twitter and the Facebook API, Foursquare API. He, of course, he didn't understand OAuth or anything, but he could build stuff. And now he's on his way to be a really great Node.js developer. 
And in the Node.js world, and also everywhere where we can run JavaScript, we can build upon all these modules. There's an incredible amount of modules we have at hand. 180,000 is probably 1,000 more this morning. This is the biggest module registry that ever existed. And Richard Rogers said in his talk on Monday that at least 50% of Node's success comes from the module system. And I want to put this even higher because there's not only a module system that you can apply to your own applications, it's this, it's this ecosystem of existing modules that you can just use right away. And this is what NPM enables. They have a really great CLI tool, they have the registry, they host everything, they make it accessible, and they have a really amazing team of amazing humans working on it. And as they say themselves, they're removing the friction where everyone else is adding speed, and I couldn't be more thankful for that. And there is this. It's the community. And this is also what this community achieved. There are no exact numbers, but there are about 50,000 individual people who have already published modules. And this is just incredible. This is what inspired me, and this is what got me into this community, because everyone is working, and they're working in the open, and they're talking about stuff. And it's just incredible. And I know we are right now celebrating the new Node.js 4.0 release and all the new contributors, and it's really great, but I have to like get a reminder in there's still no woman on the Cork team, and all the new contributors that are coming in are still mostly men. So of course, this community is pretty great, but we have to make it even more welcoming, even easier to access, and we have to make it diverse. And if we can make this, this is just a dream, because everyone can get productive in just no time. And I have to say I'm very happy that there are some people that I think are the right people are working on this, and we're in the right direction. So everything isn't 100% awesome, but we're in the right direction. And then this comes in. Small modules are only nice in theory, and that's every serious developer. Because the thing is, we don't just need productive developers with an enormous output every day, because if in the long term we want to ship serious software and serious products, that pay the bill for all this, like this amazing tent and all the beer. Um, we need to be able to work in teams. And we need flexibility, but also stability and maintainability. And yeah, this is the part where small modules is only nice in theory. And so we came up with the term. And it's probably so privileged that it could only become a thing in the tech community. We are calling this dependency hell, hell, like seriously, the worst place we could possibly be in. And that's because code that other people wrote for us, mostly for free, stops working. OK. So please imagine you're a small kid, and instead of asking your parents or your aunt and uncle for this one particular set of Lego, like this castle or whatever, you just have an unlimited resource of Lego blocks. You can have any size, any color, any form, and at any time. And you can build anything you want. And this is exactly how I see the NPM registry. And now imagine, like, imagine being a small child. And all of a sudden, one of these Lego blocks breaks down, and your house collapses. And it does no longer work the way you wanted it at first. Imagine you're a child. What would you probably do? you would start crying because it collapsed. And that's essentially what we are doing as developers. Small modules suck, Samver sucks, NPM sucks, everything sucks. And I have to tell you something, no one would be here right now if it weren't for the modules. Like literally, this tent, it wouldn't only be empty, it wouldn't be here because Node wouldn't be a success. And there would be no NodeConf, at least in this um, scale. So let's embrace these modules and let's make more of them and let's make them better. But also let's grow up and become responsible about that. Because there's one thing that's accurate about the term dependency hell. Hell is a place where you get punished for your sins and that's your own sins and not someone else's sins. So here's a misconception about modules. We might be getting functionality for free 
but we have to write the tests ourselves or only use modules by John David Dalton, which is a stupid joke because it's actually quite the opposite. Even if JDD wrote every single module you're depending on, we have to have proper tests because that's the only way we can prove that our code is actually working. Actually, the, the test suite is the one thing that defines what you actually want to build. And so if you don't have that, you don't, you don't have a thing, even if you're just using modules for the implementation bits. And so if you don't have a proper test suite, you don't have software, you don't have a product, you have a hack. And of course, I, want, I don't want to exclude myself. I'm using hacks all the time. But we have to be aware that it's a hack, and we have to stop laying the blame on others. Because if we have the test suite, updating or changing dependencies is not a problem anymore. We know exactly and immediately if something breaks. So here are the two take key takeaways. We have to understand that modules are everything when we want to become productive. And we have to understand that we have to test our stuff if we want to stay productive and build maintainable software. So are we there yet? I think we're on the road, kind of. There's a lot of traffic on this road, so it's almost a traffic jam, but I think we can get there. Um, first of all, we need to stop crying when stuff breaks, because all the modules, they are so great, and all we do is cry about them. And we can have all these Lego blocks. We can build everything we want. We only need to become responsible about that. So if you don't think it's possible to test your application, then think about how to make testing more accessible, how to make it easier. And if you think your software is untestable, then you have to find a way to test it first, because otherwise it's just a hack. And if you think Samver is broken, then stop hating about Samver, stop calling it bullshit, or stop calling Samver people religious. Because, I mean, even if you think Samver is that bad, then please work on making it obsolete. So I only got about 20 minutes for this talk, so I can't go into the detail of what this brings us when we have these tests in place, but I want to give you a prospect of what's possible, and I want to start you thinking about this stuff. So about a year ago, I wrote this, this tool, um, and it started out as, as an internal tool for Hoodie, so we could manage all our internal um, components and it handles the entire release process for you. So you don't have to decide what version you're releasing, you're not deciding when to release it, and it also writes a change log for you. Um, and it does that based on some conventions, but there's also an Egghead series about it, and if you watch that, they can probably explain it better than I do, but here's what they think about it. And the cool thing is that I mean, it's worth it on its own that you have a fully automated release process because it's the same thing over and over again. We can make a lot of uh, mistakes that way. But after that was in existence, it, it became clear that when the, when the release of a new module, of a new version is, is automated, we can come up with heuristics around releases. So what we did is we thought about ways to detect breaking changes. So one approach was we, whenever we want to release something, we just go in and check out the test folder of the latest release we have done and try and run the old tests against the current version. And if that doesn't work any longer, it's probably a breaking change. And there's much more stuff in that area. So there's another NPM module called Don't Break. And you can just define a list of modules that are depending on your module. And when you want to release something, you just run their tests. And if they break, you probably broke something. So that's another way to, to detect breaking changes. And there's India, which is an interface diffing algorithm. And if you have the respective JS doc um, comments in your code, you can just see if the interface changed in a breaking way. But, but there's way more. You could, for example, stop releasing software automatically if you don't have enough code coverage. You could stop releasing software if there's a vulnerability in your dependency tree by um, querying the node security project. There's so much more. And just this week, um, Twitter released the Diffy project, which is running um, two instances of your code. One is the old code, the latest one at work, and your current code. And then it sends some requests, and then compares the responses. And if there are some differences, it's probably spotted a regression. 
And there's another tool, and it's a bit in a different direction, because you have your module or your app, and your dependencies are outdated, as they always are, and you can just run this tool. And what it does, it updates all the dependencies, every single version in isolation, and then runs the tests again. So if it breaks, you know where it's broken. It's not like dependency hell, everything is broken. You can, using tests and these tools and new ideas, you can find exactly what's breaking. And again, just this week or last week, GitHub announced um, required status checks. So again, this is, this is another tool to enforce these things that you can't just have untested code on your master branch or something. You can build tools around that and we, we can explore way more and, and stop, yeah, stop stopping at this place where dependencies are hell. And so the thing is, we might be able to get here, but we have to slowly unfuck software and its culture. And then we should end up in paradise. Thank you.